Hi, how you doing? This is Mitch, Hard Intentions, uh, YouTube. Once again, thank you for tuning in. We also have hardintentions.com where we sell t-shirts. Uh, we're still working on getting some hats embroidered. And we have stickers, artwork, and the like. And we appreciate you uh, people who have ordered from us. Thank you very much. Um, and we also appreciate those people who have subscribed to this channel and watch. I want to thank you for that. Um, I want to touch on a little subject today. People have asked about a few things on the uh, comment sections. One is like women's staff. So uh, <clears throat> that's kind of a touchy subject because some guys think uh, women staff, you know, guards, prison guards, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're fair game, you know, like, hey, and some guys have caught them, you know, like made them their old ladies, whatever. Some guys messed around and ruined their careers. And, you know, once the, their career's over, they ditch them. But uh, <clears throat> it's a touchy subject, too, because uh, uh, it's for staff and, and inmates alike. A lot of inmates, prisoners, whatever, look at female staff as, you know, they're cops, they're rats. You know, professional rat. That's what they would, some guys would call them. You know, um, you know, like in the county jail, there were no female staff when I was there. Um, the county jail is run by sheriffs, so the there were no uh, female sheriffs working in the jail that I remember. And then when I got to uh, the reception center, Chino, there was one uh, woman working there, Maddie. They call her Maddie. That was her name. Uh, she was kind of a big girl, kind of wild, you know, kind of outgoing, loud. Uh, I remember she was trying to work in the, in the hole, in Palm Hall, and this lieutenant was like, she'll, have, she'll, she's out of her mind, we're never going to let her work in here, you know, and so, uh, let's see, up in San Quentin, they were, they were, there were staff. And uh, female staff, a lot of them. I remember uh, I was in the hall, I was in the back uh, first tier where the food carts come in. They bring the food in in carts back then and they would run the food up to the tiers and the cop would go down the tier and make the trays and give them. But uh, she came pushing the carts in and and uh, there was no one around. Everyone was locked up and she brought and she was crying and I'm like, what's up? You know, she was a little, little, a uh, woman, you know, kind of short, and uh, some guys out in the hallway, they have a, in the rotunda, they, they have stairwell that goes up, and the guys are up on the top, you know, spitting down on her when she was waiting to come in the unit, she had, you know, I gave her a towel, wipe her face off, she had spit on her, I was like, man, that's fucked up, you know, but, uh, yeah, she was pretty good to us, she used to feed us good and all that shit, but, uh, Later on, she ended up uh, transferring over to Solano <clears throat> and got hooked up with some inmate over there, Filipino cat I knew, who's now out living back in the Philippines. But, uh, you know, she, she moved over there to, to work in uh, uh, Solano, it was a new prison. And, uh, you know, she would she was fronting herself off like terrible, you know, like so bad that she was going to this guy's uh, area, you know, his bed area, I guess it was a level two, and just, like, fronting herself off to the point where they ended up moving her, and I think he got a ride up over it or something, I don't know, but he was under heavy suspicion because she was just so loose, I mean, you know, she fell in love with the dude, and, uh, you know, she's working in prison, man, I mean, all eyes are on you, right, <coughs> excuse me, and you gotta remember, like, Eyes are on women, female staff. Guys are watching them, and the other staff are watching them. You see how they carry themselves. And if uh, there's a rumor, you know, then the eyes are double on them. So I mean, it's you know, it's hard to do anything, especially in the new prisons. There's no, there's no privacy, you know. But uh, so San Quentin, there were some things going on. There was another <clears throat> female staff got fired there. Um, she was involved with some prostitution ring on the streets along, along with cocaine and, you know, came out in the newspaper that her and these other staff were involved with 
so but uh i never seen her messing around with anybody i'm sure she might have been but uh and I, I went to vacaville for the programs there that they had for lifers and um vacaville was probably the the prison where the most stuff happened you know i mean it was just off the hook because you got to figure each wing has three floors and in that prison, each floor is separated by a floor. Whereas like in Tracy, they have three three tiers, but it's just wide open, you know? So there's uh, a lot of room in Vacaville. To, to, back then there was, I don't know about now. It, they've tightened it up quite a bit since then. But um, there was a lot of room for uh, shenanigans, you know, to go on. I mean, you could get away with just about anything you wanted. <clears throat> Anywhere from murder to drug use to whatever you want to do tattooing and uh let's see i remember uh when i first got out there i mean uh to that main line it was just off the hook but uh one one uh you gotta remember too that was a, a lower level prison but they had all levels there at that and you know the prison system was just it was in the uh, mid 80s and it was just being jammed with people uh, tough on crime stuff was happening Parole violations were rampant. <clears throat> they would violate guys for just about anything, stick them in prison. So they only have so much room in the higher level prison. So they would, if you were programming, you could get to it, you know, going without write ups and stuff. You could get to a, a kickback pen pretty easily back then um, because they only had so much room in the prison system. That's when they first, uh, before they first started building the new prison. So Anyway, we're in the wing, and, you know, we're partying, and they had the cells, and then they had a day room. Then behind that, they had a dorm, a 16-man dorm, and uh, I lived in that dorm for a while, then I moved into a cell with a friend of mine, Dirty Dennis. But uh, the day room and the back dorm were, were uh, full of inmates, and uh, my cellie and I, we were doing stuff. You know, we had a little... Uh, party going on and there was this woman that worked in there I forgot her name some heavy set blonde chick and uh, yeah I didn't really like her she was kind of lazy and uh, you know like to get out of the wing the cop has to open the door for you you know um, she you know take forever to get her ass up there to open the door to go out to go like if I want to go to hobby or want to go somewhere <clears throat> I tell you why don't you just leave the fucking door open man but you know, she slid in the cell when I was in there, man, and told my cell, hey, is there anything? He's laying in bed reading Smut Magazine. Back then, you could have Smut Magazines. And she tells him, is there anything I can do for you? He told her, man, get the fuck out of my cell, you know? Um, you know, he's married at the time. That was right before I got married. But uh, she started messing around with a guy in the back dorm. And... Uh, I guess she felt like that gave her some status with the white dudes or with inmates in general. And uh, to me, I didn't, I didn't, it doesn't give her any status with me. Like she doesn't get a pass um, from doing her fucking job just because she's fucking around with some, some inmate, you know. Um, they ended up getting caught, you know. She ended up quitting. They didn't actually get caught, but she quit her job because uh, they were, they were going to fire her. Um, and dude got in trouble, you know, over it, and he got sent off to another prison. I think they transferred him to DVI. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was an ugly scene. She was in there snorting crank off the desk and just, you know, uh, they were having sex in the bathroom because uh, they have a, a staff, have an office, and then there's a little bathroom connected to it, you know. So she's in there fucking this guy and using drugs, and, you know, it's an ugly deal, you know. Um... For me, I didn't really care because, like I said, the only thing I didn't like was she was lazy. She felt like she got a pass from doing her fucking job because she's messing around with this cat. And it doesn't work like that for me. Um, if she would have done her job right, she probably would have got a little more respect out of me. I used to fat mouth her. So, hey, you fat bitch, get up here and open the fucking door, you know. And, and uh, I guess she felt like this dude she was fucking around with should put me in check or something. But, uh. Yeah, he approached me and about it, and I said, I said, hey man, fuck that broad, you know, she's gonna do her fucking job. I don't care what you're doing with her. <clears throat> I just want her to do her job. Period. You know, I got to get out of this building. I said, tell her to leave the fucking front door open. You know, so uh, 
anyway there was another uh, staff there uh, a black chick she was pretty cool um, she worked in the because when I went there I was in the hole I stayed in the hole there for like nine months and then they let me out to the main line six months something like that so she worked in there and uh, we had a confrontation and I was like hey because see here's the deal with staff female staff especially if they get uh, a hair up their ass uh, like if a staff member accuses you of something that's one thing a dude but if a female staff accuses you of something it's all bad because they look at that as that's their that's their girl you know the, that you're messing with our girl you know not necessarily like my girlfriend girl but that's our girl you know like that's like our sister or that's whatever or if some of them guys think they want to get with them that's it they look at it like hey you know i'm going to protect this chick and whatever that's their women that if they're wearing green they're cops they belong to that team you know and they're going to protect them and they're going to stand up for them they're going to back their play no matter what so <clears throat> anyway i had a little confrontation with this lady and uh then i told her hey you know what man i want to apologize to you you know i was out of line blah 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 because i was trying to work my way out of the hole you know and she just kind of like all right you know and uh, she was a black chick you know and <clears throat> so i seen her on the main line she worked my building a few times, and uh, I remember doing a tattoo on this guy's back. He was in a motorcycle club, and I tattooed his patch on his back and shit. And uh, and she came in, and she said, oh, you're uh, one of them. you know." She, and he said, oh, yeah, you know. So she would let me tattoo, and and uh, she was kind of a heavy set, you know, when I met her. And I noticed she was, like, losing weight. This is, like, about a year after I've been out on the main line there. And... Uh, I said, man, what's going on? She says, oh, I'm going to the gym. I've been going to the gym. I said, yeah, okay. You know, this is the mid-80s, you know. this is By now, this is like 85, 86, around there, early 86. And, uh, man, she wasn't going to the gym, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, she worked the first floor, but she would work our wing once in a while, you know. And so she would let me tattoo. And and uh, I knew a dude that worked in the kitchen. He was like a lead man in a diet kitchen. And, uh, cause they had special diets there for guys that were, had dialysis and, you know, diabetics and whatever. They even had guys that were, uh, they got uh, a special diet. They got double trays and stuff. I mean, it was crazy. So he worked in the diet kitchen. His game was, you know, on the other end of the, the prison, they had the, the nut wings that were lock up wings and they had food carts that went down there and back and forth and, uh, staff that worked the hallways to get used to seeing guys pushing food carts you know and after a while they didn't even fuck with them and so he would push the food cart down to his building and unload it and that's where she worked you know she worked in that building and it was like uh, you know just kick her down feed her or whatever and she let anything go on pretty much you know and that guy's game was you know cooking food and selling food burritos and and whatnot you know but you know she ended up uh losing her job uh i could go down there like you're not supposed to go on other floors and other people's buildings and wings you know housing units but man i could go down to the first tier there and go and slide into that building and <coughs> no problem <laughs> excuse me and uh it was just a party zone that building that wing that she worked in and uh i noticed again she had lost even more weight i mean she probably lost a third of her body weight she got really thin and and then uh you know by now a couple years have gone by and she's like oh look at smiley he's all grown up now you know she goes she's all you're all grown up now i go yeah and she's kind of like sliding up on me uh not you know just like overly friendly you know and you gotta mind remember she's a cop she's a staff member and uh yeah, it's out of bounds for me, you know what I'm saying? I always, I always put uh, female staff out of bounds. I always res try to respect them, get along with them, just like any other staff. But, you know, as far as anything, trying to catch one, I mean, that was always out of bounds for me because not only uh, does it fuck your program up if you get busted, and you're going to get busted, you can't get away with fucking around with female staff in prison for long. I don't care how slick you are. Um...
you know, your friends look at you different. Like I said, my friends look at female staff as they're, they're cops, you know. Then I said, you don't fuck around with cops, you know, um, no matter how cool they are. Anyway, she ended up getting busted for dope. Uh, I think cocaine was involved. I don't know all the details, but she lost her job, you know. Um, so, you know, she was fucking around with dudes in there. I mean, shit goes on like that. And uh, they got guys that got game, you know. They like to throw that game on the female staff, and sometimes they catch them. Uh, other times they don't, you know. They get, they get in trouble. <laughs> Especially if they, uh, I guess what they do is they'll throw feelers out there, you know. And uh, uh, and if they, you know, feel like they're getting a nibble, they'll continue. But uh, there was a, also a female staff <clears throat> when I worked up in G3. I was a tear tender, you know. And the evening, and she worked the evening like two days a week. And uh, she was a big girl, black chick. And there was this dude, you know, d during count time, I would come out and sweep and mop the tear. And, and uh, you know, I forgot her name, man. Anyways, uh, this guy's like, hey, man, why don't you let me come out and clean the tear tonight, man? Uh, you know, and I, I got the drift. You know, he wanted to get with this chick, so I let him. And then uh, in the mornings, of the, the cop that gave me the job was like, hey, man, what the fuck's up? Smiley, you know, the tear's dirty, this and that. And I say, yeah, I got you. So the dude asked me again. I said, nah, man, I'm, I'm going to come out and do my job. But uh, he was fronting himself off with this chick, you know, and then... Uh, Evidently, she was fucking around with someone else because they went to her house and uh, for some reason, someone paroled like a dummy used her address. They go and check her house out thinking this is, you know, it's a parolee address and they found these fucking CDC uniforms in the closet, you know, her work uniforms and they're like, man, what the fuck's going on here? So, she, you know, needless to say, she lost her job, you know. But uh, evidently, she had more than one boyfriend, too, because uh, this dude was in there messing around with her while she had some dude on the street on parole that was messing around with her out there. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a shady deal messing around with it like that, man. But uh, Vacaville was probably the most, you know, it was, it was off the hook because it was so wide open and so loose, you know. But, uh, anyway, I went to, uh, New Folsom after that. I ended up in New Folsom, and I remember there was this female, uh, she was a counselor. She went from being a, a correction officer to a counselor, and she had, you know, blonde hair, and these dudes used to call her, uh, Seca, you know, after the, the porno actress, you know, and she knew they would, they would, hey, you know, she hated it, man. So this guy goes, hey, I gotta go see my counselor, man, uh, What's her name? This youngster, you know, he's asking these guys, what's her name? <laughs> they go, oh, that's Seca, yeah. And so, uh, you know, he went in an office and he goes, hey, Seca, you know, and she's like, what'd you call me, motherfucker? <laughs> she said, get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> that dude came out to the yard and told us what happened, man. Everybody just fell out laughing, you know. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, anyway, I went to Tracy, and uh, uh, Tracy was kind of a loose pin, too. It was uh, a little more secure because it was a little more serious, you know. But uh, there were female staff there that were not too shabby, you know. Um, some of them would give you a little respect, treat you right, you know. I mean, give you what you got coming. That's basically what you want from a staff member. If you're a convict, you know, you're just doing your time. Uh, even if you're doing illegal shit and you're being cool about it, especially, you know, all you want is what you got coming. I want my fucking showers. I want my mail. I want to be let out for yard on time. Stuff like that, you know. Um, when you get a package, you want to get down to R&R &R as soon as you can to get your package because they only take so many people each time they run packages. You know, shit like that. So, uh, the female staff that, that give you what you got coming... And don't give you any bullshit. You know, they, they respect you, you know. They, uh, they got respect coming, uh, just like any other staff. Uh, there was a, a, a Mexican chick that worked in my wing. And uh, she gave me a job as a tear tender. I remember that. And uh, 
I was sweeping the tier, man, and there was this youngster on the tier. He's kind of, kind of a wiry little motherfucker, and uh, he had all the shit out on the tier. And I said, "Hey, man, uh, what are you doing?" He said, third tier." And he goes, uh, "Oh, I'm cleaning my cell. You know, I'm, I'm going to paint my cell because the painters would come in. You could paint your cell. You know, a lot of guys. I didn't give a fuck. You know, I just wipe the walls down as long as they're clean. I don't give a fuck what about the paint. You know, but this guy want to paint his cell." And I said, well, the painters aren't going to come for another couple hours, so why don't you slide that shit back in your in your door there and let me uh, sweep and mop the tear. Because that's my job, and I like to, you know, keep my tear clean, you know. So I go down, you know, and I come back down. I go, hey, man, you're going to slide your stuff back in the uh, in the uh, cell so I can sweep and mop the tear. And uh, he's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then I came back with a mop and shit and he's like uh or, you know around the, like the third time and i'm like hey dude uh you're gonna put your shit in your cell and the guy's like you know basically basically shining me on so i go hey look if you don't put your shit back in your cell i'm gonna throw it off the fucking tier and the guy gets in my face he's like dude you ain't you're not gonna do shit i go really so i just i threw all the shit off the tier you know i remember throwing a hit a case because tracy had terrible water and they would sell bottle of water in a canteen. I had a case of water there, and I, lit, I threw it off the tear. I remember they hit the ground, and the bottles bounced back up. It was kind of funny. You know, I threw his TV off the tear, the whole works, off the third tier. He's like, ah, oh, you motherfucker, you know, and he, and he uh, grabbed the mop ringer, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, and he's just, I said, come on, you know, come on with it. And he put the mop ringer down, you know. And so I went, you know, and he walked away. So I went down the tier, you know, I went downstairs and I was getting some shit to clean the tier. I figured, oh, fuck this dude, he ain't gonna do shit, you know. And uh, I'm standing there and then on the second tier right above me, there was this uh, female staff. Her name was Kathy, I forgot her, her uh, last name, but she was a Mexican chick, you know. And, you know, her family worked there. <coughs> she was a career, you know, uh, staff. Anyway... This dude ran up on me with a big stick, you know, like from a scrub brush and a big stick. And he's like, you're going to hit me with it. And I, I told him, come on, you know. I didn't know she was standing right on a tear right behind me. And uh, anyway, the dude rushed up on me with a stick, swung it on me. And I walked into it and it just, it broke right on my shoulder. And then he threw the stick down and he backed up. He didn't know what to do. And before I could rush the dude and get up on him, you know, the alarm went off and she told me, hey, she had come down the tier. She said, get, get on the wall. I go, uh, see what happened? She goes, I saw everything. So I went to the hole for a day. And, uh, you know, she spoke up for me. said, hey, you know, he didn't do shit, you know. And I got right out of the hole. And I got my job back, all that shit. So, I mean, a lot of staff, won't they won't speak up and say what, you know. So she had a lot of respect coming from people. She ran the wing, gave people a... Uh, what they had coming, you know, and people respected her, you know. She was polite to people, and she had respect coming from just about everybody. Um, and then there was the uh, female staff I told you guys about who took my tattoo equipment. You know, at first, uh, you know, we had kind of butted heads, man, over that shit. And uh, later on, she kind of, you know, she kind of quit tripping on my tattooing. And, uh, you know, one thing... Even when that was going on, though, she would give guys their showers, like, got, you know, out for work, yard. You know, I worked nights and at that time, and she'd pop my door right on time so I could go to work. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that female staff get respect for, you know. <clears throat> but uh, there were female staff. One uh, got busted uh, fucking around with dudes and uh, ended up killing herself, you know. She ended up sucking on a gas pipe out on the, well, uh, I didn't like her. She was a fucking bitch, really. And uh, she was fucking around with inmates on the street and in prison. And uh, I guess she got pulled over out there. She worked in Tracy, you know, and she flashes her little prison ID, you know, like, hey, I'm a prison guard. And the cop's like, I don't give a fuck who you are. Get out of the car, you know, and. And then he realizes that, you know, she's in a car with a guy on parole. And, uh, you know, he reported her. She lost her job. And uh, next thing you know, uh, we heard that she was in a, in the garage in her car, fired up the car, 
you know, gas fumes and killed herself. So, yeah, nobody cared much for her and nobody liked her. I mean, she was a dirtbag. She was a speed freak and uh, she was a bitch. You know, she'd fuck you out of your yard time, all that, you know. So, uh, anyway, that's how that one worked. Then there was another uh, a woman there that worked there. And uh, some dude, I tattooed on this kid, man. And he's like, yeah, man, I really like her, man. You know, I said, hey, look, that's a cop right there, dude. And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, and this kid, he was a youngster, you know. But he wrote her a letter. And uh, I don't know how he mailed it to her, but it went through in prison to prison, you know. And she told him, dude, what the fuck are you doing? They can't roll that dude up. We've never seen him again, you know. Uh yeah, I'm sure he got a little ass whooping on that, too. She ended up killing herself, too. I think her last name was Lemon. She ended up killing herself on the street. And uh, then there was a hillbilly chick that worked there, man. She used to chew tobacco. And, uh, man, she was just, uh, she was out there. And uh, she ended up running off with some dude who paroled, uh, Doobie, and ended up marrying him, I guess. You know, quit her job. Ended up marrying the dude. I never ended up hearing what ended up happening with that. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> then there was Jerry. Uh, I mentioned this before on another interview I did. But, uh, you know, he married this chick who worked in Folsom. Now, I wasn't in old Folsom. But she worked there when some of my friends were there. And she would tear up people's cells. Uh, you know, throw your shit on the ground in your cell, your photographs, whatnot, step all over your photographs, just disrespect you pretty much. And she could get away with that in old Folsom because, you know, Folsom, man, you don't fuck around with the cops. They, they'll kill you, you know, and if you're fucking around with a female cop, even if she's got it coming, they'll kill you. And the way the staff are there, like I said, they're going to stand up for her no matter what. I mean, they do that anyways, Right. But uh, especially for female cops, if it's a dude cop, they're gonna they're gonna stand up for him, you know. Uh, but a female staff, especially, so she, anyway, she's disrespecting people, treating people like shit, getting guys in trouble. I think she became a sergeant, and uh, she ended up. I don't know how it went about because she was a real cunt from what I hear. And uh, this dude Jerry ended up marrying her. She quit her job, married him. He was in Tracy. Pops up in DVI, and I had a little homeboy there. He's kind of a wild dude. Uh, I didn't really uh, f fuck with him a lot, but uh, he took this dude up in the shower and beat his ass. He told me, you're going to pay for what that bitch did to us. And he beat that dude's ass for 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, you have him in a headlock, you know, ramming his head, running from side to side in the shower and smashing his head in the wall, just... He fucked that dude up pretty bad over that shit. And, you know, here's the deal. None of the dudes I fucked with trusted that dude. He married a cop. That's, you know, that's how it went. Um, not just did he marry a cop. He married a bitch who was a, a super cop. An asshole cop. Uh, I mean, if she was nice, whatever. She might have been a little... It might... I don't know. But, I mean, he was... He paid for that shit because she was a bitch. She treated us like shit. So she didn't have any respect coming and neither did he. Uh, I never trusted the dude. And then she would come to the visiting room and try to interact with people. And uh, I'd tell my lady, hey, don't fuck with that broad, you know. She's no good. She's a cop. So, I mean, that's how that works, you know. Um, you know, when I was in Donovan now, uh, there was there was some, you know, things going on there. It was kind of weird. There was this one uh, lady who worked the yard and uh, you know, this dude was messing around with her. I think she was a Samoan in black or something. Or Mexican in black. Claiming to be Samoan. And uh, some Mexican cat was fucking around with her. And he's like sporting a watch and doing uh, you know, doing shit. And, and uh, it was this strange situation because she had they had a little Connex box, you know, with all the yard equipment and everything. She ended up losing her job. She got fired. And then the same dude who was fucking around with her uh, 
Nothing happened to him. She just lost her job. I think she was doing some other shit. They got her in trouble. But uh, he started messing around with this, uh, this Mexican chick, younger, pretty good looking woman, you know, working in the kitchen. And uh, some guy's like, yeah, he's fucking that chick, you know. I'm like, wow, you know. And, uh, but he's putting it out there. You know, the whole yard knew. She ended up losing her job, got walked off, you know. Uh, there was a lot of shit like that going on. There was a female staff there in Donovan, uh, messing around with black dude, some white chick, you know, big girl. And I guess she had, she had, uh, family members that worked at the prison too. But, uh, you know, she ended up losing her job. Next thing I know, I heard she was working as a stripper down there somewhere in San Diego. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was a way out. And of course, I went to Corcoran from there. Uh, I didn't see a lot of that shit in Corcoran. Um, needless to say, it's, it was a level four, and it was, you know, they weren't playing that shit. Uh, female staff, you know, people had their eye on them. Uh, I don't remember any female staff there getting, you know, involved with relationships. Uh, Lancaster, now I remember this this teacher in Lancaster, she was like a real thin black chick, you know, uh, <clears throat> always talking about Benny Hinn, that, that, you know, evangelist guy on the shammer, you know, healing, you know, oh, you're healed, you know, and all that shit, and, uh, you know, she was all into that, and uh, super Christian lady, right, so she used to be a model, she was married to some Jewish cat, you know, they had kids and whatnot. I didn't really care much for her, man. She was real opinionated, and I was working in arts and corrections, and she wanted to come in and teach some bullshit art thing she did. And uh, I was like, man, I'm not having that shit. I don't want her coming in here, you know. My boss was like, yeah, fuck her. But uh, she moved to another yard. It was an S&Y yard, you know. <clears throat> and I heard the story goes like this, because it was obviously another yard, uh, and it was a PC yard, you know, S&Y but she was teaching over there behind the wall. So the, they have they have a wall where the yard is. They have the buildings, then they have a fence, then they have the classrooms, and then they have a wall. Behind the walls where the vocational classes are and all that. But they had some classrooms back there too. So uh, I guess some Mexican cat was fucking around with her, you know. And uh, some guy seen it. And he's like, uh, you know, I want some of that. And, and she's like, well, what do you mean? And he, he's like, you know. I want to, I want to hit that, right, you know, bottom line, he told her, you know, I want to fuck, and uh, if you don't give me none of that, uh, I'm going to tell on you, and she's like, well, you know, we're in love, you know, we're in love, that's why we're doing it, because, uh, you know, we love each other, and he goes, I don't give a fuck, I want, I want to hit that, or, or I'm going to tell on you, you know, and uh, so they were cool for a week or so, I guess, and then, uh, and then uh, they went back to doing their business, you know, and the, and the dude's like, hey, you know, this is a PC yard. Dude's threatening to tell on you. What are you, what are you thinking, right? And evidently told on them, and boom, they got busted. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to laugh. <laughs> Excuse me. I got a little shit in my lungs. I'm still trying to get rid of. But uh, you had to know the situation to know it was, it was pretty comical. Um... Yeah, uh, you know, it was a, another female staff on my yard who, uh, she worked in the education building where, uh, where my arts and corrections was. She was just, you know, black chick, you know, and she was older, had some youngsters, you know, in there, uh, dude was getting with it, you know, they would, they'd be in there smoking weed, making wine, in the education, you know, what the fuck are you thinking, right? Even though it's a level four pen, I mean... <clears throat> people see that shit and you got to understand like whether it's uh selling dope selling tobacco having a female staff do stuff for you people see that shit people watch everything that goes on in there and see then they get jealous and then they go tell that's how it works so these dudes are in there partying it up in education and uh uh you know it was it was pretty wild you know they got busted
she lost her job and they sent the, the kid, they transferred the kid out to some other level four prison. I think he went to Calipatria, I'm not sure. Uh, there was another, uh, there was another chick worked there. She ended up getting drunk driving beef. She was kind of loose. I never heard anything, but, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're going to fuck around with female staff in prison, you're going to get caught. And you know what? I couldn't understand, like in the early days, staff didn't make that much money. I asked some cop in 81, how much he said they made 18,000 bucks a year. Now these cops are making, you know, 60, 80, 100,000 bucks a year. It depends on how much overtime they work, you know. So I could never figure out why a female staff would fuck around with a dude in prison and jeopardize her job like that. Because almost every time they get caught, you know. Uh, there was a sergeant in San Quentin when I was there. Uh, kind of little chick, you know. Uh, you know, black chick from Oakland, you know, uh, she was kind of out there. They were, they run up in her office, you know, the door was locked and, and, uh, so they, they get in there and she's got, you know, can tobacco's illegal now in prison. She's got cans of bugler stacked up in her locker, you know, hundreds of books of stamps, all the shit that guys, you know, they're hustling in there. So obviously these dudes are fucking her and she's bringing them tobacco, you know. But she was a sergeant, so she's making, you know, 100 grand a year probably. Easy. So it's quite a deal for a, a, a staff member to give up her job like that for, you know, for what? <laughs> yeah, some guy doing a life term. I mean, you know, some guys I know... Uh, married female staff and paroled to them had kids together all that and it worked out but most of the time it doesn't you know it's two different walks of life you're dealing with a guy who's a criminal who's committed felonies and unless he's turned his life around he doesn't plan on committing felonies anymore and he's cool with law enforcement it's not going to work out because you got a female staff who's involved with law enforcement you know it's like oil and water man you know, two different ways. It doesn't work. Uh, and then I imagine, you know, she would probably be upset about giving up a career for, for what? Being a correctional officer for female, you know, where else is a woman going to make 70 to 100 grand a year? And to be quite honest with you, uh, you know, prison's not that bad of a job. I mean, it's not that, I don't mean, not that I would do it. What I'm saying is it's it's not a hard job. Uh, now everything's sitting in a control booth, pushing buttons, sitting at a desk, writing a little pass, and a guy in his way, you know. Uh, <clears throat> the female staff, though, they get respect. Like before I parole, there was a little woman that worked uh, the yard I was on, and she couldn't have been more than five foot tall. She's a little tiny, and uh, she worked in high desert. So she saw some, you know, some shit and, uh, you know, she saw some serious violence. So now she's in a kickback pen and she's like, Hey, it, the, here's the deal. If a guy drove up, needed his property, guy needed to get laundry, guy needed to get to work, whatever, needed to go on a job interview off the yard. She would hook it up. She would give you what you had coming. She would help you get what you had coming. You know, always had a smile. How you doing? Uh, and then, you know, she would be gone for like two, three weeks at a time. And, uh, guys would ask the other staff, Hey, where's so-and-so, you know? And they, and they told us that, uh, you know, she had a child that had cancer or something, had a, you know, pretty bad illness. I think it was cancer. And, uh, you know, she never spoke about that. She never was like looking for sympathy, like, Oh, you know, I got a, a kid at home with it you know, serious illness or nothing. She would just, and then she would come back from two, three weeks off, a month off and be the same, you know, treat everybody the same, didn't change up. So everybody respected her, you know. <clears throat> she's still a cop and all that. She's not crossing the line. She's not trying to fuck around with anyone. She's not trying to hustle, make money, you know. So people respected that. They respected her. And that's the bottom line with anything, you know. Um, when you're in prison, if you act right, 
you get respected. If you don't, you know, doors open for just about anything. Anyway, folks, that's my little take on female staff. And, you know, it's not a good thing to fuck around with female staff if you're doing time. Because you know what? You're going to get caught and you can get your ass beat. You can get killed and by either side. Sometimes your homies might jump on you and beat you down because you're fucking around with a cop. And you didn't kick down, you know. I mean, and, uh, you know, it could be staff that get on you about it. You never know. So my advice, if you're doing time, I don't care what the signs are. If it looks like the door's open for you to mess around with a female staff, don't walk through that door. This is just nothing but trouble, especially if you got a life term. Because if you go to board <clears throat> and you've been uh, given a write-up for fucking around with a female staff, they look at that as you're a sexual predator, you know, just so you know. Even if you're not, even if it was a two-way street, that's how they look at it. So just keep that in mind and uh, steer clear of that shit. Respect's cool, but anything other than that, you don't want to fuck around. Well, folks, thanks a lot for listening to this video, watching. Uh, all you guys who have subscribed, thank you very much. And uh, our Patreon subscriber, Daniel McCoy, thank you. Uh, hope you like your shirts. You guys take care out there. Remember, whatever it is you do, do it hard. Do it to the fullest. Thank you very much.